Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer at the Church of the Transfiguration. I'm Kyle the Deacon. Here's Peter and Rasmus. They want to show you something. All right, go guys. Can you do it? Where does the A train go? To the flying. To the flying? Yes. To the airport, you mean? Yes. You're right, the A train does go to the airport. Oh, okay. You gonna... Can you say good morning, guys? Good morning! Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for praying with us, can you say? Oh, gracious. Oh, gracious light. Transfiguration. That's for the evening, yeah, transfiguration. Okay. Well, this has gone long enough. We'll make, pick a short version of the psalm. We, everyone, uh, you'll give us just a minute to get ourselves a bit better situated. And uh, welcome to this tour of our apartment that we just sort of, sort of happened. And uh, we'll begin morning prayer in just a second. Our service of morning prayer begins on page 42 in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. We use the, the nighty, as Anglicans insist on saying it, on page 44. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O oh, come, let us adore him. Our so, a selection from the Psalter this morning will be Psalm 142, which is on page 798 in the prayer book. I cry to the Lord with my voice. To the Lord I make loud supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all my trouble. When my spirit languishes within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for me. I cry out to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry for help, for I have been brought very low. Save me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, the righteous will gather around me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scripture reading is a selection from the best chapter in the Bible. This is just objectively the case. I will fight you over this. Um, Romans 8, verses 12 through 17. It just is the case. I'm sorry if you happen to be a John 3 person, you know, it's not, you're not wrong, except, yes, you are. Romans 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. 
For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirits that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the traditional morning prayer canticle, the Song of Zechariah. That's canticle number four on page 50. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is where I sometimes insert a brief reflection. Um, and since this is probably the last day we're going to be doing uh, the, the YouTube the morning prayer, I I'll take the privilege and do that. Um, first of all, it has truly been my pleasure to be... Uh, to, to pray with you and to lead you in prayer in this way over this trying but at least very interesting time. Um, even when I was away in Florida, uh, quite far from most of you, you know, I, I, I felt like I, I did feel a very strong connection to you while we were doing this together, so thank you. Um, second, uh, to amend my previous statement, if you're, if you think the most uh, objectively, you know, awesome passage of the chapter of the Bible is Habakkuk three, it's still Romans eight, but we don't have to fight. You're good. You're good. And um, as to Romans eight, you know that 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 passage that you know, when we cry out Abba Father, Abba being the Aramaic word for Father. Abba, Father. It's the very spirit bearing witness with our spirits that we're children of God. Um, I just hope you know that when you pray, and this is completely irrespective of how you feel while you're praying, when you pray, it's really the Holy Spirit praying. God is communicating with God. God's life from eternity is one of something like communication. The three persons of the Trinity, in their love of one another and knowledge of one another. It's this perfect communication. And we, when we pray, get to be part of that. We, the, the words we say, if we say words, they're taken up into that. They become part of that. But I mean, what we are and who we are and the way we communicate is goes much 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 deeper than just words and it's the spirit praying through us it is taking us up into the life of god and we are required by the gospel to believe and it's true it is just is true if you believe nothing else believe this god uses our prayer god uses our prayer to change the world I like to say, and if you were going to, I don't know what I would want inscribed on my tombstone, but this would be a candidate. God does not need our prayer, but God uses our prayer. Um, I think that's it.
With that, we can continue with our divine communication, our holy nonsense, as I sometimes like to call it. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O Almighty God, who hast built thy church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, grant us so to be joined together in unity, by spirit, in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable unto thee, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee, for all members of thy holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we take a moment uh, for each of us, each of you, to offer up a prayer, offer up our, our intercessions and our thanksgivings. And naturally, even though this is the last time we're probably going to be doing this by video, I'm not letting you off the hook. Um, I strongly encourage everyone to name at least one of each. A member of our congregation had a knee surgery on Tuesday, and I would like to pray for her recovery. I'd also like to pray that as, um, if God wills and the creek don't rise, we resume our public worship in the church this Sunday, that God will both bless this time together, that God will use this time together, and that God will grant us wisdom and discretion to do this as safely as possible. And so I want to offer a prayer in advance for everyone who will come and for everyone who will continue to join us uh, through a live stream or even later in the week. And thanksgivings for you, for you who join this uh, th this prayer with me. Um, if, it's, if you've been doing it for weeks or if it's your first time, if you were actually just looking for a cat video and somehow clicked some 
being cracked link and are wondering what the heck is going on. Um, I don't have a cat, I have kids. Uh, I thank God for you because another thing about prayer, I guess going along with what I just said earlier, that it, it changes the world, God uses it, and every person doing it makes a difference. Every person doing it changes the quality of it. You know, we're physically apart and have been in ways that have not been fun for anyone, but we've been together in prayer, together in that spirit. And you know, God does stuff with that. It's, I got a PhD in theology, so I'm supposed to be able to tell you like, you know, all the technicalities and spell it out logically what God does with that. Uh, you know, come to church. I'll tell you about it in some sermon sometime. But God does something with it. God uses this. So thank you. I give thanks for you. And since we're in a really Thanksgiving mood, let's conclude with the general Thanksgiving, uh, which begins on page 58. This is Cramner at his best. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.